Neurology quiz number 22. What is Suzak syndrome? It is an autoimmune disease of the small arterioles of the brain, retina, and inner ear. It is considered an immune-mediated endotheliopathy, causing endothelium-induced occlusion of microvessels. Clinical features consist of a triad of encephalopathy, branched retinal artery occlusions, and sensory neural hearing loss. It is common in women and usual age of onset is in the 30s. Encephalopathy consists of acute or subacute episodes of cognitive deficits, mood changes, psychosis, depression, fatigue, and focal neurological deficits. These changes may be preceded by tension type or migraine headaches. Hearing loss can be acute and may be accompanied by tinnitus. Branched retinal artery occlusions can cause scintillating or dark scotomas, but may be asymptomatic. The classic triad is present at disease onset in only 15% of the cases. Early diagnosis can be difficult as symptoms of the triad can appear successively with intervals up to several years. Brain MRI is important for diagnosis. In the acute phase, it shows round snowball lesions in the center of the corpus callosum, best seen on flare images. White matter lesions can occur in the periventricular and subcortical regions, cerebellum and brainstem. Gray matter is involved in 70% and leptomeningeal enhancement or contrast enhancing lesions may be seen in the acute phase. DWI lesions reflect acute strokes. CSF may show lymphocytic pleocytosis and significant elevation of protein without oligoclonal bands. Fluorescein angiography detects branch retinal artery occlusions, and audiograms show hearing loss, especially in lower frequencies. Treatment is empiric and based on expert opinion. One approach is to initiate treatment with corticosteroids and IVIG and add rituximab and or mycophenolate in case of breakthrough disease. If disease activity still persists, cyclophosphamide can be tried. Antiplatelet agents are also given. Outcome may vary from full recovery to significant disability. Important differential diagnoses are MS, CNS vasculitis, Cadacil, autoimmune encephalitis. This slide shows a sagittal T2 weighted brain MRI in Suzak syndrome demonstrating typical snowball lesions in the center of the corpus callosum. This is from Kleffner and et al. in practical neurology. The other figure shows retinal fluorescein angiography, which is demonstrating occlusion of the superior temporal artery. This is from Vishnevsky et al. in Medicine 2016. What is pantothenate kinase associated neurodegeneration or PKAN? PKAN is the most common type of a group of disorders labeled neurodegeneration with brain iron accumulation or NBIA, previously called Hallowood and Spatz disease. It is an autosomal recessive condition caused by mutations in the pantothenate kinase gene or PANK2 located on chromosome 20. Such mutations can lead to an error of vitamin B5 or pantothenate metabolism, which is required for coenzyme A synthesis. Individuals with PKAN have abnormal accumulation of iron in the brain, especially basal ganglia, including the globus pallidus and the substantia nigra. Onset is usually in the first 10 years of life with insidious onset of dystonia and gait disorder, dysarthria, dementia, rigidity slash spasticity, retinitis pigmentosa and optic atrophy develop and progress relentlessly until death in early childhood. Atypical presentations with onset after puberty and slow progression into adult life may also occur. T2 weighted MRI brain scans show areas of reduced attenuation in the globus pallidus surrounding an area of hyperintensity, also called the eye of the tiger sign. Medications that can be helpful for dystonia include trihexafenadyl and clonazepam, while botulinum toxin can be used for focal dystonia. Spasticity can be treated with oral baclofen, and a baclofen pump can be used in severe cases. Iron chelating agents have not proven helpful. 
This is a brain MRI showing the eye of the tiger sign. There is a symmetrical bilateral abnormal low signal on T2-weighted MRI due to abnormal accumulation of iron in the globus pallidus with a central high signal due to gliosis and spongiosis. This picture is courtesy of Dr. Abdullah Al-Khatib. A tiger's eyes are shown for comparison.